Hey everyone, good morning. It is uh, March 11th, 2022. I am Super Fizz from the ETH Staker community and I am joined by my good friend, Remy Roy. Hello everyone. Uh, so we are both from ETH Staker. You can find us at reddit.com slash r slash ETH Staker uh, or in our Discord. I think it's discord.gg slash ETH Staker. Um, ETH, ETH Staker is a uh, what we call a we consider a public service to help improve access to staking, um, and we have an overall goal to support the health of the beacon chain. Uh, and with that, uh, Remy has written a guide for onboarding onto the Kiln testnet. Uh, I have not, um, other than reading tweets, I haven't really engaged with Kiln yet. Um, so I'm really excited. This is going to be my first. Uh, exposure to Kiln. I've obviously played with some of the other test nets, and I know it's going to be similar. Um, but I'm excited for Remy to guide me through onboarding onto Kiln, and um, I hope everyone can join us. The one thing I do want to point out, eStaker intends to give out a POAP to anyone. I think it's going to be anyone who um, it proposes a block on Kiln um, after the merge test net. Uh, in all reality, we're going to have to see how it unfolds to figure out like who would be eligible. Um, but if you participate, there's a high likelihood that you're going to get uh, a POAP for Kiln. And I, I believe that's very valuable. I really treasure my Madasha POAP uh, and all of my early testnet POAPs. I bet you do too, right? I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, so where do we start, Remy? Um, so it should be fairly simple. Let's start with the, the guide itself. Uh, I don't know if you have the link, but I'll give it uh, again in the, um, the chat okay. here it should be fairly simple like anyone with like le very little knowledge of doing like just regular installing of any software should be able to do this one and since you're an expert it should be even easier for you <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an expert in, in bs I don't, know that, <laughs> I don't know what else that qualifies me for um so uh, yeah, I haven't actually looked at the guide yet, so I'm going to kind of scroll through it um, as I go, and I think that's fair to everyone else. Um, man, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I loved. We did Kintsugi uh, about a month ago. That was yeah, and this is probably going to be pretty similar. It's going to be very similar, um, and it's going to be even easier. There's like two different things that change, uh, mainly how to add um, the network into your MetaMask which is much easier now. And the other thing is the deposit for adding a validator. That part is like way easier because previously we had to use these um, less known tools, which required some kind of script. Now we can just use the, the regular official tools that are promoted. Um, and there's a launch pad as well for Kim now. So it's much easier. Cool. So it's going to be much closer to the real Absolutely, event. yeah. Um, and so, okay, I'm using lab two. Uh, I had initially set up a brand new machine to run this. Um, and then, uh, what, oh, oh, you suggested that I needed a desktop instead. So I switched to a, uh, a pre-installed virtual machine. Um, so, uh, there could be some historical stuff on here. Um, <laughs> did we, I need to check my services real quick. Um, sure. I, I have probably done some of these things on this machine already, um, but I, I will be fine. I'll just, we'll roll All with right. it. Uh, and so obviously we're beginning just with updating the machine and running upgrades. Um, yeah. Do you want to show your, um, your screen or something? Oh, I thought that I was. <laughs> I'm serious. I thought that I was already sharing it. Um, let's do this. My apologies. All right, there, you go. there we go. Uh, and so there is the <clears throat> URL, github.com slash Remy Roy slash Uh, And from there, you'll be able to get to the directions. And we can make sure that uh, URL is easily accessible for people like maybe in the description of the video or sure, it's yeah. also I'm, on. I'm terrible about descriptions, but yeah. uh, I know that's where a lot of the, the value is. Uh, so I guess your system was somewhat out of date. Apparently, or maybe I never ran it. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't really know what this box was. Um, right. I, I opened it up and saw a lot of, uh, it's, it's kind of half clean and half junk. I think I may have imported some stuff into it. Um, 
So I usually suggest people start with a clean install of uh, Ubuntu um, or a clean on, on either like a virtual machine or a dedicated machine, but this should still work. We'll see. Yeah, and he, here again, we would suggest Ubuntu 20.04 desktop edition. Um, yeah. that, that's, that makes the most sense for anyone. So best practice here is going to be to reboot after a new kernel is installed, uh, but I won't be doing that for the sake of getting the tutorial done. And um, that's totally fine. All right, and now we're going to install some prerequisites. Uh, we talked about these things before, but as I copy here, the way to paste into the browser is Control Shift V, uh, or you can right click and paste. Yeah. Um, Control V is a different terminal command. And there's a bunch of these commands, so like it's much easier for you to just copy and paste them than just retyping them. That's I I retype if I'm trying to learn like hmm how does this work. But when I'm just trying to get something done down and dirty, it's going to be a straight copy yep. paste. Uh, so the first command uh, looks like it downloaded Golang, uh, and this is going to install it. Yep. Uh, and now we're going, actually, uh, this is going to set the path to be able to find Go. Uh, and this is going to add Go to the profile for this user, so anytime this user types a go command, it will be found. And now we're going to remove that binary we downloaded because we don't need it here anymore. That's just a leftover and one needs uh, after. That, I was looking for this yesterday, the, the Rust one-liner. Um, I am feeling obsessed with one-liner installers right now. For I love them as well. Uh, there, there's a... <laughs> I always get to this. Should I say Rocket Pool or not? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, but do it. I was I was urging Rocket Pool, like let's do a one line installer, uh, because when people don't have, uh, say you're installing from a, a server, it's so much easier to just write a one line installer than to yeah. try to copy like this long path. All right, so uh, we just. Uh, installed the most recent version of Rust. It's extremely easy uh, with this one-liner installer. Um, the, only, the only problem with the one-liner installer is you don't always know what's going on under the hood. But if it's something that you know well, uh, yeah. one-liner is easy. Uh, and so here we uh, sourced the cargo environment uh, that's part of Rust so that uh, our system is, is aware of it. And now we're gonna go to the home directory. All right, tell me what's going on here. So we're going to be cloning this uh, special version of Gef um, on Marius personal repository uh, called merge-kiln-v2. Uh, dash That's just the version the, the um, testnest guys told us to use. Um, so that's just a special version that we're making ourselves here. We've had a lot of support from uh, both uh, Marius and Perry uh, for getting this stuff going. So I, I really appreciate their willingness to involve the community in these test nets. Um, yeah, my hat, my hat off to these guys. They're doing so much work and they're doing awesome. So, yep. And now we are building this GEF version. It should take a little while. Um, just have and to so wait here. Big picture here, um, Kiln is is the public merge test net for the beacon chain. Um, I, I'll go ahead and finish the introduction, and then we'll go on. Yep. Um, and so it's going to begin first as a proof of work chain, and it's going to run as a proof of work chain for about a week. Um, and alongside that is going to be this beacon chain version that is similar to what we have now um, on our main net beacon chain. Uh, and there's a point in the future, which we expect in about seven days, uh, unless someone mines it with a GPU, um, that will bring difficulty on the proof of work net uh, up to this something, up to a, a number, the total terminal difficulty. And at that point, uh, the network, network will transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, and then we'll all be on a proof of stake uh, kiln test net. That's something that, uh, eStaker intends to hold a live launch call for. We're very excited about 
Uh, but because of uh, the way proof of work mining works, it's a little difficult to predict when it might happen. So uh, we'll just have to play it by ear. Um, I made geth, and I need to move the binary. And we're done with um, the special geth version. Now we're going to be going to build and install this uh, special Lighthouse version. Actually, cool. Lighthouse is another beacon chain client. I did actually see a um, a Teku uh, version of instructions floating around as well, and so yep. it's cool to try a couple different things. And in this grand scheme of um, testnet, Kiln is supposed to be the last major uh, testnet before the merge. Um, so hopefully this one's going to be the last one and it's going to confirm that everything's working right or it's going to find new bugs that will be eventually fixed by the different uh, client teams. So if you have any like uh, decentralized application, like any smart contract that you have uh, currently running on the mainnet, you should try to deploy them on Kiln and see if they, they still work because there was a few different changes to the structure of the merge. So after the merge, uh, there's, I believe there's like two fields which have changed in the um, clients. Um, and so if your program or if your smart contract lies on those fields, maybe you'll have to do some minor changes there. So we are building Lighthouse now. Uh, Lighthouse is one of the uh, four or five um, proof of stake clients. Uh, and as, as a node operator, you'll be running both a proof of work client like Geth or Besu uh, and a proof of stake client being Lighthouse, Prism, Nimbus, Teku, and Lodestar um, or Lodestar. Uh, kudos if you, if you run Lodestar on the test. Um, and I'm, I'm feeling more excited about running Lodestar on mainnet have you get any, given any thought to that? Um, I'm, I'm getting uh, to do more tests with Lodestar. Um, so I want to I wanna see how it performs. I know that the, the Teams is running a few nodes um, currently with the um, Ethereum Foundation grant yeah. uh, with their client. Uh, I, I wish I could easily find out the different stats about their effectiveness and how they work, but I'm sure it, it works great. Uh, so my my personal um, qualifier, and I, I I do make this pretty publicly known, is I'm I'm most willing to support um, Lodestar on mainnet when they're included on the launch pad. I think that's a very good standard. Um, so, all right. So uh, what do we think? Merge in what month? June. June. I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> Like I say, I'd rather be wrong about June than predict July and have it in August. I might tweet that one day. <laughs> There's a lot of unknowns, right? So like, let's say, let's say we run Kiln for a few months and like we, we find bug every week or something like that's, that's like unlikely, but it's still possible. Um, so maybe that'll like uh, delay the launch of the merge. Um, but we'll see. Like this is not the first merge testnet, right? We we had a bunch of those. This is like, I believe like the seven for the eighth one. Um, there was some minor ones that the the guys used to test different clients and like different new approach of like communicating between those, those clients. But like this is not the first one that that's been uh, running around. I wonder if we can find that. Uh... Ethereum merge. There was that that clapping Vitalik picture uh, of the merge the first time they ran it successfully. Um, was that in? I want to say it was in uh, ECC. I don't think I've seen that one. There is a great picture of all the developers. I'm not going to find it here. Uh, it would be great to show everyone, but it is, it's just a picture of uh, essentially all of the development teams um, and so many recognizable faces watching the, the first DevNet test. 
uh, and when they actually switched over from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, I want, it was probably two or three months ago, um, but a, a very cool thing to watch. Probably even older than that, because yeah. I remember time, time like, people talking about the merge forever. <laughs> yeah, um, I wonder, uh, I was going to take a break and ask uh, someone to share that, but I believe we are almost done with compiling Lighthouse. But I'm, I'm trying to find the list of the different merge testnet that were happening as well. Let me see if I can find them. And so after Kiln, if Kiln is successful, the next steps will be to uh, merge the, th the, the three longstanding testnets uh, Robston, Rinkeby, and Gurley. And uh, when those are complete, assuming that everything goes well, <clears throat> uh, everything will be ready for mainnet merge. I also, I'm interested in seeing that prediction market. I haven't looked at it in a while. And I can't remember where it is. Um, the prediction market for when the merge will happen. These are all things we should put, I guess, in the description. Yeah. Which, uh, hey, I'm going to post that to eStaker, but I'm going to be, I have to, to exit as soon as the video is up. Um, I'm, I'm on a long drive, so if you I can chance, modify the description and great. add it there. My descriptions are always like, did a thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, DevConnect is coming. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited with that. Um, there's a lot of uh, things going on with DevConnect. EveSticker is going to be hosting a three-day event there. And we'll have a bunch of uh, speakers, a bunch of workshops. We'll have a hackathon there too. So working on, we are working currently on some of these details. Um, and hopefully this week or next week, we'll be able to post some of these online for you guys awesome. to see. How many tickets are we, are we offering? I believe we have like 300 tickets for okay. the three days event. And then I believe 50 tickets for the hackathon. Cool. Very exciting. Um, all right. So we made Lighthouse and now we need to install, install it globally. It. And we're going to go back home. And I, I always, I'm not going to check. My commitment this morning was I'm going to follow Remy's directions <laughs> to the letter. I'm not going to like go rogue on him um, because I normally I would always do like which lighthouse let's, let's make sure it's where it needs to be, but we know it's there. Uh, what are we cloning now? Uh, we're calling the merge testnet definition, right? So we need some of these uh, Genesis files or config values to be able to initialize uh, get, for instance. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so this next part here is simply to create a user for running GEF, create a directory to hold the, the data and assign the proper permissions. Oh, good. I'm like, I'm a, I was just, I was afraid it was already there. Um, and I'd have to do a little bit of cleanup, but thankfully, it would have uh, shown some error values, I think, if it was there already. But your machine seems to be clean enough. <laughs> it's so funny. Like I, I have seen stuff on this that, and maybe I just copied it over. I think I copied the Firefox profiles over. But I was like, what? why is there five-year-old stuff on this machine? <laughs> so we're initializing GIF with the, um, the merge config values. And so it can like actually sync on the proper chain there. Let's look at this. 50 maximum peers, no smart code. There's a bunch of these Gap messages that like are irrelevant here, but yeah. Writing custom Genesis block is part of what we need to do there. Very exciting. Okay. Um, and now we're going to create the service. Yep. Ooh, I'm going to try this. Um, creating services, if you don't do it a lot, ooh, it's perfect, can be kind of picky. Um, so uh, I would suggest using that copy button. It's very important that unit service and install are on, on all on individual lines and with a line break. Um, 
you will know in a moment if, if you didn't get it right, but formatting yeah. does matter here. And so as usual, when you create a new service, you have to call daemon reload and you have to start the service and check if your service is running properly. Come on, green. Yes, active it running. It seems That's to be running for, fine. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And I do love um, following guides. You've done so great here, like when they just work and you're not like. <laughs> That's the goal of the guide. I know, just right? make it work. <laughs> Um, all right, so we can watch. Ah, oh, do you know the last time we did this, you taught me CCZE, uh, and I've forgotten it since then. Um, I'll have so to revisit. I'm going to make a note. We can see that, like, we have a bunch of these import new chain segment message. Um, that's because GEF is syncing currently. And so... It seems like everything's working fine. Like you see this uh, weird snapshot extension registration failed. That's a common message that you should probably ignore. But everything else seems to be fine here. And obviously I tried Q to exit. It'll be control C to exit. That does yeah. not stop the service. We have to say these things every time. It doesn't stop the service. It only um, exits the, the log view. Yeah. All right. Um, so, oh, hey, look at you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing we did for Geth for Lighthouse. Yep. And just like we did for Geth, we have to create this new user, this new directory to hold the data, and assign the proper permissions. We should say... Um, if you decide to mine on this network, um, you should not mine with a GPU. Uh, you should only mine with a CPU. And I'd say at this point, it might be safest just not to mine to only get coins from the faucet. Uh, does that sound fair? Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe the uh, Marius are trying to time the time uh, when the, the network is going to change a state so like it, it's harder if people are, are mining on the network so please don't mine and if you do just make sure you're in touch with uh, marius and perry to to make them know what you're doing and technically to help them. it's permissionless but it's still a test so yeah uh, and this is lighthouse is working uh we're going to enable lighthouse yep and it seems like from looking at the status of the service that it's running fine, but we'll see with the logs there. All right, so we see that. that it actually received a new block. <laughs> Yay! So it's syncing properly now. Um, you have this warn message about syncing F1 block cache. Um, you, you can ignore that. It's simply telling you that your beacon chain client is trying to connect with the, um, the GEF node, your execution client. And it's it's like figuring out that GEF is not in sync yet. So it's just a warning there. Awesome. But it, it, it's fine since we're just starting running the clients. All right. Um, and so, yeah, we've, we've reviewed these and we are pretty set to go here. Yeah. Um, we're going to try Kiln. Uh, first thing I'll need to do, let me open up a new window over here. And I'm going to install MetaMask real quickly. Yep. So if this you don't where, have MetaMask yet, you should. This is where Remy hijacks my keys and uh, gets me <laughs> slashed. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ubuntu never actually restarts for me when it says it's going to. It's always like, I need to restart now. And then nothing. So yeah. I was excited to see it asked to restart and actually restarted. So if you don't have MetaMask yet, you should install it. Um, an easy way to install it is just to go to metamask.io and then follow the instructions there. But MetaMask is the main tool for people to access their wallet. Like it's not the only one, um, but it's a, it's a good tool. And so if you don't already have it, you'll have to do all of these um, steps there. But eventually you'll end up with 
<clears throat> your first account there. And here we are. Oh, awesome. Now, the next step would be to go to the official Kiln website uh, with a browser that has MetaMask. And you've got the link in the, um, in the guide. We can just copy and paste it. I love these easy, uh, easy URLs. That's very handy. Yeah. And so the new way to easily add the um, Kill Network to MetaMask is simply to click on this Add Network button up there. This is a very recent change. They've <laughs> upped the total terminal difficulty uh, as a result of the, the uh, issues with GPU mining. So uh, <laughs> and I'm so sorry, where, where do I click to add this? So it's at the top of the page there. Oh, oh it's, that's um, this new button. <laughs> These are the things I always miss. I always miss <laughs> like, <laughs> here's the obvious thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's an elite chain ID. All right. So we're on kill now. I bet I can see. Yep. yep. Awesome. And so you, you should be able to see the amount of uh, kiln eater you have in your account, and it should be zero when you start, right? There shouldn't be any kiln okay. eater. Now, the next step would be to go to the faucet and like request some, some kiln uh, eater. Now, I have to remind everyone, uh, because we are giving out a POAP, you're going to want to, well, we intend to hand out a POAP. You want to keep these details uh, close because the POAP will be related to um, this address that you receive, Kiln, uh, Kiln Testnet Ethon. So, um, and the way that we've done that in the past is uh, thanks to, was it Sam's idea? And... Mr. Mojo's implementation. We're sending those, uh, I'm gonna actually show you right now. We're sending those to the beacon scan chat for that. Uh, Which is a block scan, I believe, block scan. The, yes, the uh, am I gonna IO. show that now? No, let's just, let's move forward. My, my goal is to, uh, is to follow the directions. All right. <laughs> All right, now you just have to wait a little. Um, hopefully it should be fast enough. Hey, 32.08 ETH. And so you can also click, there was like a link there, view here. Uh, I believe that would oh, okay. uh, redirected you to the transaction explorer, but- I just, um, Let's see what happens if we annoy the faucet. You could try it again, but you should also be able to see it in your MetaMask eventually. Uh, sure. There might just be a small delay. Uh, okay, I thought that it might uh, <laughs> just give me the link directly. But you see it there, right? You see that you now have 32.08 ETH. All right. And which should be enough for you to uh, do your deposit for activating a validator. I love that they actually included the block explorer in the MetaMask import. That's, yep. uh, very That's a nice tight. feature. Yes. Uh, all right. So. So you completed this uh, add kiln to MetaMask section of the guide. Um, okay. So you can skip most of this part there. You requested founds, and then maybe you want to perform a simple transaction, but we, maybe we can also skip that one. Um, um, that would involve like cre you creating a new account and then transferring from one account to the other. Let's let's skip it for now. We we know that it works. Uh, it is a good a good test, but. Um... Let's just keep moving. So the next step would be to create your validator keys and perform the deposit. So maybe you should try the Wagyu Keygen app. What, uh, what can you tell me about Wagyu? So Wagyu Keygen is a sample wrapper, a GUI wrapper on top of the official staking deposit CLI tool. Um, it enables you to create your validator keys and deposit file. So we'll just try it and, and you'll see it's pretty easy. This guy looks a lot like you. It does, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I... Um, I know that Colfax, Remy, and a bunch of the team have been working on Wagyu for a long time. So I'm, I'm so proud um, of them for completing this. Uh, should I do, which, which installation method? Uh, you you could like click on, um, maybe click on releases on the, uh, if you just scroll okay. up a little and download from there. Um, so since you're on Linux, you, you should download the Linux version. I do love app images. And before you can use the app images, you'll have to make it um, executable. Uh, so uh, chmode plus x. 
I'm over here wondering what this uh, random data. <laughs> like, is that private? I don't know. All right, so and you can also do this something similar with the um, file explorer as well. Oh, can you? Yeah, if you right click and then you go into properties, you'll see there's this permissions tab and then there's this execute I, field. I'm not sure I've ever used that dialogue. It's like, if you're like familiar with the CLI or the command line interface, yeah, you often my, use In my the... defense, I've only been using Linux like 15 years and that's probably something that I, it's new to me, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so now we'll uh, create some new um, secret recovery phase. Uh, first, you'll have to select the kiln uh, testnet and then okay. just click on the create new secret recovery phase, which is often known as the mnemonic, the mnemonic too. Do you want to walk us through these? Um, like it's very simple. Uh, you just click next, next, next until you're done pretty much. <laughs> All right, so, so this is your secret recovery phrase. You can copy it there to make it easier. You should try to store that somewhere um, in case you need it later. I'm going to put it in notepad and lose it promptly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so this copy button works on test nets. Does it work on mainnet? It works on mainnet too, but oh. on mainnet, you'll have to retype each word um, individually. But like if you click next uh, to confirm that you um, actually re remember or stored those, you just have to paste it there. And then you'll have to enter a password for your key store. So whatever password you choose, make sure you store that password or that you remember it. Uh, we'll need that password later on when you, we do the import into the validator client. Let me save so, this before I forget. All right, I will still lose it. But. And so what's remaining is simply to choose a folder where the keys will be created. Uh, let's put those, let's maybe in your home. Yeah. In your home directory. Okay. And, uh, they're right. going in home fizz kiln keys. And that's pretty much it. I and love you, wag you. And are you done? And so what is this an alternative to what, if, if I wasn't doing it this way, how would I do it? So that's an alternative to the official staking deposit CLI tool, which is created, which was created by the Ethereum Foundation, I believe. Um, and so that's just a, a GUI that you can use instead of having to type all of those commands um, in your terminal. Is there any reason to believe that Wagyu is less safe or secure than the... Uh... Uh, there's no reason to believe that it's less secure than the official tool. We okay. had uh, an audit and we we did good there and you can actually read the audit report if you want to great okay so uh we are still <clears throat> in these directions all right now and we are done with creating the keys the next step would be to do the deposit so if you just scroll down a little oh, okay, in, in the guide you'll see um that now uh, the next step would be to do the deposit uh using the kiln launchpad so um, I believe you. Oh, I went too far. Scroll a little too far. Um, Adding a validator. It's at the Great. bottom there. Uh, go to the kiln launchpad. Got it. And follow the instructions. Like if you've never used the launchpad before, um, there's a bunch of uh, text that you should read, and like it explains I, the risk of uh, being a validator. I am reading this very carefully. I'm just a speed reader. Yeah. <laughs> And so um, like, it's, it's a nice tool. I, I do um, want to, we should mention this. Um, client diversity is a thing that I talk about all the time. Um, right now, we know that uh, over 90% of the, op, the valid, I'm sorry, the proof of work uh, execution layer clients are running Geth. Uh, Besu is coming up, Nethermind is coming up, and Aragon. They're all uh, well-developed. And you know, I mentioned Lodestar earlier that I was ready to support Lodestar when it's on the launch pad. This is the launch pad and these three clients are listed along with Geth. Uh, so I really do encourage people to give one of these a shot. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of good buzz about Beisu and I know yeah. a lot of people love Nethermind and Aragon. So um, 
it, there's often a time when I when, when I won't kind of I'll be like ah yeah try something but I'm I'm very eager to support uh, all four of these clients uh, and same with consensus clients we know that Prism is running 66 percent of uh, consensus clients right now um, Lighthouse is the second client I really encourage people to try Nimbus and Teku uh, and they're both excellent clients uh, yeah. like, you shouldn't be scared of running uh, minority clients we have played with these for over a year uh, and they're all fine all right and so th this is these are all information I don't really need to click them um, no like this is mostly like if you haven't done your setup yet and like if you want to learn more about how you can do it. Oh, I and love this. We now have the Wagyu Kijin yes. on the launch pad too. So that's a nice exposure for us. That is beautiful. All right. And I'm keeping my keys safe. It's not like I did a YouTube stream and included my <laughs> keys in it somehow. Like yeah. that would be crazy. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I need to, let's see if I can navigate to it. Yeah, so now you have to select the deposit file, which should be in the directory you um, selected. Uh, when and you... obviously two files here. Do you want to tell us the difference? Yeah, so there's this deposit file, which is used with the launchpad to do your deposit. So that's mainly to, to, to do the deposit, nothing else. The key store um, has your validator signing keys in there, and that'll be used to, um, to make your validator client uh, work properly. All right, so I uploaded the deposit data. I'm choosing MetaMask. I'm connecting my wallet. So at this step, you you should have some like kiln testnet um, uh, currency. <laughs> uh, if you don't, uh, just go back and do the the faucet and request some some funds there. This is some of the most exciting stuff. Um, like no matter how many times I do it. Uh, like I'm just, I'm blindly clicking through these because I've read them and I'm, I'm comfortable with them, but this is really exciting. I know uh, for new validators, this is when your, um, when your heart, your blood pressure is up and you're like, I don't know if I'm doing yeah. it right. <laughs> All right. This is the big one. And it's as simple as clicking a few buttons there. And one of the things it's great to try this on testnet because when you get to mainnet, it does feel stressful. But if you've done it 50 times on a test net, when you get to mainnet, honestly, it still feels just as stressful because it's money <laughs> on the line. But you've done it so many times that it's, it's yeah. second nature. Uh, that's funny. Like when I, I, I did so many of the tests before Beacon uh, Chain launch, you know, you know, all of the, literally all of the test nets, the public test nets I participated in. But then when it came to do it, time to do it for real, I just got so sweaty and nervous. Like, what if I do it wrong? Absolutely. And there was a survey about this and even people that were very technical and very knowledgeable were still uh, kind of scared. All right. So overview, we've staked 32 testnet ETH. We have one validator. The current APR is 8.5%. Uh, and I have not seen this. I, I guess I honestly just close up because I'm done. Um, I've seen that page before, but it's it's a good um, checklist to make sure that you have done all the good practices. Uh, and also, there's a great invite here to the ETH Staker community on Discord, which um, obviously that's what Remy and I do. Um, I don't spend a ton of time in the Discord, but I, I am very proud of the quality of support that, that they provide, that we provide, that our organization provides. All right. Um, so what's next? So that's pretty much it. Now we should go back to the... Um the guide and do the validator oh, client. Create a validator, so, that's right. Yeah. So you were um, right there. So maybe you should resize that window so we yes. can see both of them. There you go. And again, it's just that same old copy paste. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of these commands that are quite similar. Um, you have to input your password. Yep. Uh, and once again, thank you for making this so easy to follow. That's the goal. Uh, I believe you missed the second line there. Thank you. So as usual, we're creating this new dedicated, dedicated user and um, uh, directory for running the validator client.
And so these next steps will require the path to your um, key store. So I believe it was home, fizz, and uh, kiln um, yeah. keys, right? Kiln yeah. underscore key. Yeah, so so you have to replace the path to key store with that value. A... Easier for me to edit here than... Yep. Is that right? Yep, I believe that's right. And then you'll have to re-enter the key store password that you use when you created your keys. That's the password that you yes. entered in the Wagyu keygen. If you forget those keys, by the way, you can regenerate the key store. Don't panic. Yep. Um, it's, it's just an extra layer of security on the validating machine. So the, the only thing in all of this, and we say this a thousand times, the mnemonic is the only thing you cannot lose. If you lose your key store, if you lose your deposit file, if you lose your key store password, no big deal, regenerate them. If you lose your mnemonic, um, then it's time to um, go have a nice dinner with your family and enjoy your evening. Uh, so... Like as long it. as you have your uh, mnemonic or your secret recovery phrase, you can always recover. That's the takeaway there. Yeah, someone's going to say, why should I go have a nice evening with my family? Because <laughs> you, you don't have ether anymore. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it at that point. Um, all right. So I need to reload the daemon. And we already performed these steps for like each of the different services that we created. So we ju we're just doing them again. All right. And I'm always looking for active running. Now we can enable it. Uh, and so the way that system services work, I'm sure most people know this, but some people do not. Um, this will restart when the system restarts. Uh, and that's why we encourage doing this. If you're new, we encourage doing this on on a machine you can wipe easily. Um, because if it's your first time, you're probably not gonna know how to modify that system daemon and stop it and start it and all that. And it's okay because we're just testing. Yep. Um, it's okay if you're doing things here that are a little above your head, because if you're doing it on you know, a machine you can wipe, uh, it's just a learning experience. It takes uh, more time and experience to learn to control the services. It's not a hard, it just takes some time. So we're looking at the logs from the validator client here, and we can see that you have one um, synced validator or one synced beacon node and one validator that's available and one total validator. And it's saying that it's awaiting activation. So I guess you're in the queue for your validator to be activated since we just did the deposit. Uh, so there's a maximum number of validator that can join the network at once. And when that maximum gets reached, uh, there's a queue and then new validators are being added to the queue. But you should be able to see your validator on the uh, Kiln Beacon, uh, Beacon Chain website there. And so I went back to kilnthemerge.dev. I followed the link to uh, Beacon Chain Explorer. And then I'm going to go get that key. Uh, there are a lot of places to get the key. They're not always obvious. Um, What's the easiest way to get the key? You can look into oh, your de deposit file or the, the account you use on MetaMask. Yeah, going to MetaMask and copying this ETH1 address and pasting it into Beacon Chain will tell you the uh, validators associated with that right here. Yep. We made that easy. Um, and you can click there to find out that it is pending activation. So awesome. Um, and We'll wait in this queue for a few hours, oh, one hour for it to be processed by the beacon chain. Um, and so in, in some other cases, I would just pause the video and, and show you an active validator later, um, but I'm, I'm short for time today. Um, but this is it. Like, yep. as, as long as this machine is running, um, we have confirmed that we are pending activation on the Kiln uh, chain. We have um, the Geth, uh, execution layer running. We have the Lighthouse um, consensus layer running. Uh, we have a validator client running that is 
uh, ready as soon as we're activated to send good information to the Kiln Beacon chain. And so that's pretty much it. You are set up and good to go. Uh, and you'll want to leave this machine running uh, once you get this started until uh, you start hearing that the, that the kiln test net has ended. Um, if, if you're fun and crazy, uh, some people like to leave them running for extended periods just for fun. Uh, but really, we're looking at uh, probably a month, to be fair. Uh, it's not required, but your, your, your goal here is to get a pr block proposal. Um, if you get a block proposal, then I am certain that, that we'll be delivering you a POAP. Uh, we, we don't know yet how the network is going to unfold, uh, but that uh, submitting a proposal is the highest standard you can meet. So if you get there, you know that you're golden. And from what I've heard, um, Kiln is supposed to be running even after mainnet's merge. So it should be oh. a long-term um, merge testnet. Okay. Don't shut down after a month then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to stop that share. Remy, I'm so glad to have uh, hung How out with you it, again. How uh, long did it take? <clears throat> I don't know. We started about 10 minutes late, so I think it's a 50-minute video. <clears throat> My voice is crapping out on me today. Um, yeah, I think it took us 50 minutes. So I, that's, I always, uh, that's pretty fast, I think. Yeah, it's, it's worth it. It's a good learning experience, too. So uh, let me end the recording. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Don't forget to join eStaker. Um, and...